I know. I'm not. Um, Caitlin, what program do we do the energy, the sun's energy in? Kidspiration. Right, okay. We use kidspiration and we put the sun in the middle and then we put things around it that that the sun gives energy to. A few programs that we off, use often are uh, Kidspiration. Um, it's a great visual program to integrate um, science and science concepts um, into the daily curriculum. We also use Mac, Max Write frequently. Um, in kindergarten right now, we are practicing writing our word wool words as, as, um, as well as sentences um, to get students comfortable with the program and their word processing skills. We go to Max Write to do stuff that or the sun gives energy to and other kinds of cool stuff with the bubbles. We go to Max White to practice or make memes and or wood wood. Probably the, the most important program that we use here would be our Scholastic Keys, which is Max Write, Max Show, and Max Count. Um, those are PowerPoint for children, Excel for children, and Microsoft Word for children. Another reason students um, should be using technology on a daily basis is that, especially in the earlier grades, um, there's so many different types of learners. Um, so it meets different needs. It meets the students that have um, kinesthetic needs, uh, visual needs, um, students that uh, learn better through listening. So by using that, the computer, you're reaching many different types of needs. For some students, they can often type faster than they can write. So when my students are working on independent study projects as fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, they are often doing extensive research and being able to use the computers even just for, for note taking and keeping, keeping tabs on everything. They can note take faster, they can rearrange things faster, and it, it keeps it in, organized, in an organized way. Well, in computer lab, I thought it was really cool when I actually learned how to um, type on the computer with the speed skin on. With speed skins, you could type without looking at the keys. I really thought it was a good experience because so, I don't always have to look down anymore. We purchased two laptop carts that have Mac notebooks on them to provide laptop accessibility for the students in special ed. Helps with accessibility for children who have reading difficulties. Um, helps them with materials to be more accessible for them, helps with their um, typing if children have writing problems, word processing, helps with their processing of written materials, auditory. Learners sometimes can listen to materials with assistive technology. It's a lot of different ways technology can help. When kids gather evidence at their table, and it would be difficult for 24 kids to gather around somebody's table, they could take the camera and they're allowed to go to the camera and bring it to their tables to show evidence. In our music theory program, we're using software called Finale um, to teach students how to compose their own music. Uh, it's interesting that it, it actually gives them the ability to write beyond what, they're otherwise, uh, what they would otherwise know because let's say a, a trumpet player you know, knows about the trumpet and can write for the trumpet, but by using Finale, they're able to explore writing for strings or for woodwinds or for percussion. Um, and it really gives them the ability to, to broaden their musical ideas and, and make some exciting music happen. So parents now have the ability, once again, to log on 24 hours a day through the parent portal to Oyster Bay High School and check their students' um, schedules or check their students' progress reports or look at their report card grades. In the future, we hope parents will be able to log on and check Parents will be able to log on rather and check their child's attendance period by period. So if a parent wants some information at a time of the day when they can't necessarily reach us, they can certainly get to it much sooner. Okay, students use technology um, as part of their social interaction, as part of uh, their daily lives. And taking those applications of how students are actively using technology in their daily lives and bringing that into the classroom and having students make these connections to how they can use what they know and apply it to what they might ne not necessarily already know is, uh, I think, is, is the most significant part of what we do with technology in the classroom. Um, informational literacy is about when you're finding information, is that information good? Is it reliable? Um, is, it, is, it, is it accurate? Um, and, uh, and does it have the amount of detail that you need? 
Uh, it's really, really important in the age of using the internet because there's so much information on the internet that's unreliable. Uh, there are a couple of lessons I use with my students uh, regarding this. We do a site where, uh, an activity where I send them to a site where there's the Northwest Pacific tree octopus. Tree octopus! Um, we were learning about reliable sites, sites. and, and our like teacher fooled us by putting <laughs> on a tree octopus website. And they look at the site, it looks really reliable, there's an ongoing blog, and there are tree octopus sightings, and connections to different things about cephalopods, and they, they think it's a real, real site, and usually somewhere along the way, um, either I or they, s we start saying, the octopi live in trees, and they start to realize, oh, wait, there's something wrong here, and I show them the link where it says, oh, look, there's a picture of a Sasquatch eating, um, a tree, uh, reading an octopus, and they start to realize that while there can be a site on the internet that looks really good, um, there's a lot of stuff that isn't good on, good on the internet. The amount of information available to them is much greater on the internet uh, than it would be as opposed to the library, and they can also, while they're going, doing their research, they can uh, look at things and they have to decide if this is credible or if this is fanciful or if this is useful or not useful. In our department, uh, we're big fans of School Island, so I don't know if you've ever used it yet. Uh, School Island is a, a web-based regents question um, website where students can uh, test themselves. A teacher can actually generate exams or a student can actually go and get extra help on uh, multiple choice questions from old regents exams. So that's one that we use a lot. Well, I have uh, nine students in my research class this year uh, from 9th through 12th grade, and they're all doing in independent, individual research. Uh, we use the uh, technology uh, to get to such search engines and to medical journals such as the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association and the New England Journal of Medicine and also Lancet, which is the UK Medical uh, Journal. We also uh, use uh, technology or the, uh, the computers to research the New York Academy of Sciences uh, website, uh, which has invaluable uh, articles about recent research and ongoing research projects. Um, also an important part of our uh, project is we, do, we work on the DuPont essay and the Long Island Science Congress, but we also share our work we use the internet, uh, internet pretty regularly, especially when working with our seniors on the college admissions process. Um, nowadays, most of the colleges prefer that the students do the applications online. Well, what we know when they go out into the, what we call the real world, or you know, when they try and go on to their careers and what they decide, that a lot of the um, importance uh, you know, in any kind of business setting or anything is placed upon technology, knowing things such as Microsoft Excel, how to use Microsoft Word, how to create uh, presentations based upon things like uh, PowerPoint. And if they don't have these skills when they go out and you know, are required to do things in whether it's an, an interview or even working in a small group there, they're not going to be prepared to do those things. Because we're preparing students for to be productive members of the workforce, and the workforce has changed tremendously. So students are not being asked anymore once they get to the workforce to memorize information and just regurgitate that information. They're actually asked to synthesize information, access information, and really be creative thinkers.